Hello everyone, I am Mike Montagna, founder of People for Mathematically Perfected Economy and of course, original architect of Mathematically Perfected Economy. Speaking again on our worldwide initiative for Mathematically Perfected Economy and Absolute Consensual Representation. Broadcasting regularly from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Time each Saturday Today, on October 30th, 2010, from TNS Radio, tnsradio.ning.com. That's TNS, Tir Nasar, Land of the Free. Original material, copyright and trademark by Mike Montana. All rights reserved. The other day I um, <coughs> caught a, a quote at... Uh, caught my ear, it struck my um, imagination a little bit because um, it's uh, it's simple, it's from everyday life it was a football player um, speaking about his coach um, the one you know, perfect season that's ever been played in the um, National Football League and I understand, I know it's a little bit off, off topic but <clears throat> it it's a quote about intelligence, uh, about preparation. Um, it's about doing everything the right way. Yes, it's about football, but it relates to a, a perfect undefeated season, and it relates to the very way we as national peoples and as a world have failed to unite over one set of common objects. And, and one way of achieving them at the brink of our darkest hour. Bob Kuchenberg said, <clears throat> it's just a simple thing, but he said, the one thing that Coach Shula would not allow would be to beat yourself, because that's what losers do. Today, I'm going to cover the ways in which we're killing ourselves, <clears throat> destroying the only way to serve our own vital objects. Why? Because our own division is our worst enemy. And so because the one thing which Mike Montagna will not allow us to do is to beat ourselves, because that's what losers do. Those who cannot or will not recognize a fact of singular solution, if there is one, render all this null and void. We must dispel contending 11th hour theories if, in fact, they cannot and or do not stand. We must undress them. We must expose their faults because otherwise we are incapable even of identifying solution, much less acting on a fact of singular solution, which is the only thing which ought to unite an intelligent, capable people. And before I progress with that, I'd, I'd like to review a few of the things that we taught in the previous program, which related more to the uh, cause the fundamental cause of our present problems uh, and uh, to effect a singular solution. The principal issue that we covered was um, the nature of a promissory obligation. Most importantly, uh, we discussed the fact that in the nature, natural life cycle of a promissory obligation, principal or the fulfillment of the obligation retires evidence of the previously unfulfilled obligation. That is, payment of the principal must be retired from circulation. It is not the property of anyone. From this we learn that, in fact, we do not borrow money from banks. Uh, we learn instead that what a bank is or what a central banking system is, and this is why it's been imposed upon every country of the world, 
no central banking system in existence today has been established by affirmation of an intelligent public. And this is a reason this initiative that we're discussing uh, is an initiative not just for mathematically perfected economy, but for absolute consensual representation. This is something that we have to learn because if we don't stand for uh, the only principles which can serve us, a government which is elected by the banking system and which is maintained in power by this vast amount of taking, uh, stealing from us, um, uh, the, the, we are up against uh, a, hand, a mere handful of enemies who can afford to outdo us forever. So we have to be able to hold government accountable and nothing can exist which isn't accountable and affirmed and not only affirmed but periodically reaffirmed by the people. Thomas Jefferson mentioned that, that principle. He he suggested that you know we 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 that future generations even uh, disregard the law of of, of previous generations, um, thinking that uh, uh, laws would be putrefied by men who are unfit to rule. Um, and these are things that. Regardless of whether you know humanity is is uh, um, forever guilty of these injustices against itself, um, there there are things that we have to recognize and integrate into a solution, so that we can protect ourselves forever. After all, um, the Federal Reserve Act uh, was passed on the eve of December. Uh, 23rd, 1913, after the Democrat Party had promised that they would not create a central bank. Nor has any principle, as we said in our previous program, uh, ever been offered which justifies that system. Not a single principle. And as we proved more or less in our previous program, it's merely a system of exploitation, which is why it had to be imposed upon us. So, if after we were betrayed in the 1912 elections, having elected the Democrats to power um, because they would not create a central bank, uh, that bank or the laws, or ostensible laws which uh, created it, um, if, that, if those were subjected to a people uh, for affirmation, um, it would never have passed. Moreover, if the politicians which created it were held accountable for justifying the objects and means, and if, the, if, if a citizen, even one citizen, could disprove those uh, means, achieve those objects, that law could be rejected, um, we would protect ourselves to a tremendous degree um, from ever uh, suffering the consequences such as we are. So, um, we covered the nature of a promissory obligation. Uh, that principal paid is retired from circulation. It is not the property of anyone, much less a purported banking system, which in fact is merely a publisher of the evidence of our promissory obligations to each other, in which we, the real creditors who give up property, for these promissory obligations are denied interest by this purported banking system. Which interest multiplies our, the artificial debts to these banking systems into terminal failure, the very failure that we are presently experiencing and the very fair failure which therefore we must understand has a solution and uh, we must stand for that solution or we will ne never have it because the people who are put in power serve the banks. So, <clears throat> um, we covered this idea that we do not, in fact, borrow money from a bank. Um, we do not owe these debts to banks. They're artificial uh, debts to banks. 
the, the actual obligation is to pay the principal out of circulation so that the volume of, of promissory obligations altogether, the thing that we call circulation, has integrity. And there's only one way to do that. And we explain this last week, uh, how mathematically perfected economy is the only prescription which maintains a perpetual one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationship between remaining value of represented property, remaining circulation, and remaining obligation to pay that circulation uh, or, or fulfill the obligation. So, uh, in fact, as things stands right now, we have paid many of our debts um, many times over. Uh, and uh, this fact itself, an understanding of it, would dispel the idea that we need to publish more money uh, um, to, of all things, award it to these very banks who don't deserve it in the first place to somehow resolve this sum of debt. I'm going to introduce a comprehensive explanation for why this transformation into mathematically perfected economy, which I prescribed in 1979 formally, uh, is the only way that we accomplish all these purposes. <clears throat> In any case, what we understand then is that ish the issuance of money is a 